Welcome back. Eli Lilly's weight loss pill or for Glupron. June 2023, Health Coach Reacts. Last Friday, it's to 26 now, but on June 23rd, Eli Lilly released a press release about Orforglopron and had a presentation at the American Diabetes Association's 83rd Scientific Sessions, where they found a phase two results. They published in the New England, New England Journal of Medicine showed that Orforglopron, a once daily oral non-peptide GLP-1 receptor agonist, achieved up to 14.7% mean weight reduction at 36 weeks in adults with obesity and overweight, also had impact on A1C, reducing it up to 2.1% from a mean baseline of 8.1%, bringing you into that normal range. That's the intro. Let's talk about it a little bit. Welcome back. My name is Reggie. I'm the founder of Fit for Freelance, where I build adaptive business leaders through compassion to health coaching, science-based and engaging your core values. I like to look up weight loss stories and when there's weight loss news, especially these GLP-1 receptor agonists and the medications that are coming out, these are going to be really fascinating. I also like to help people who are searching for weight loss solutions prioritize so they love their body again without all or nothing diets or supplements and weight loss medications they don't understand. But this is really fascinating. Just came out a few days ago. Let's talk about it a little bit more. So last month, I covered a similar drug, Pfizer's oral denuglopron had an average weight loss of nine pounds in 16 weeks. And a little comment for your engagement, would you rather take a daily weight loss pill or a weekly injection or neither? Let's talk about it in the description. Or for Glepron, they had a 26 week trial comparing 12 milligram, 24, 36, or 46 milligram doses to placebo. The average study in this trial, the average client had a baseline weight of 204 pounds. And basically the results that they saw from this medication, um, this they saw the higher the dose, the bigger the impact, people losing 20 pounds on the highest dose or on a lower dose, 29 pounds, um, compared to 4.6 pounds on placebo. And this is really fascinating. These GLP-1 receptor agonists, this one is going to be pretty similar in effect to a popular one, the semaglutide, Wego, V, Ozempic, except in oral form. They also have rebelsis that is recommended for type 2 diabetes. Um, that has, and then the denuglopron is also being researched. Okay, so also after 36 weeks, they found body weight reductions, BMI reductions, waist circumference reductions. So you'll get slimmer around your waist. Um, about 5.3 inches with the 45 milligram dose after 36 weeks. And all those effects are greater than placebo. And then the glycate hemoglobin um, had that significant decrease um, to bring people with type 2 diabetes within normal limits. So th this is all really impactful and good news in terms of the medications and some of the potential uh, benefits of Orforglopron. I can barely say it. I know my dad can't say it. All right, so side effects could include nausea, constipation, vomiting, and diarrhea. That's what they found in the study. And then in The Lancet, there's also a publication that said efficacy and safety of oral or forgulpron in patients with type 2 diabetes. It was a multi-centered randomized dose response phase 2 study. That's in the comments or description below on YouTube, as well as the New England Journal of Medicine one. What this one found, this study found that, that showed weight reductions up to 22.3 pounds in adults with type 2 diabetes um, from a baseline of 221 pounds. And then people who were just on the placebo, like a, a fake medication, basically a loss about 5 pounds. So that is a quick summary of what's going on. The latest news from this Eli Lilly drug, oral um, or forgopron. And then what is it? I'll give you a quick breakdown. I've been covering a lot of this on my channel. I'll put some links below on YouTube. It's a glucagon-like peptide receptor agonist. Um, let's look at some of the descriptions of what it does. Um, it's known for decreasing your appetite. Uh, slowing your gastric emptying also decreases glucose production. So it has a, a bunch of systemic effects around your body um, that's going to reduce your appetite, cause you to feel more full, um, so you are less likely to overeat. If you are having challenges with that or if you're trying to lose weight or if you have type 2 diabetes, it can help you regulate your diabetes as well. Ask your doctor um, about these kinds of medications. I'm not a doctor. I'm just giving you the information from the studies. But what I'm finding as a health coach is that these things could be valuable part 
of your healthcare plan. And then also in my experience in public health, seeing some of the potential impacts of this um, could be staggering when it comes to these weight loss medications. Now they don't change your health habits. They don't change the food environment. Uh, they don't impact food policy, which are all major concerns in preventing diabetes in the first place or preventing obesity in the first place as well. But um, in terms of treating obesity and diabetes, it could be very valuable. Um, there are some questions that come up in terms of cost, length of treatment, rebound effects when it comes to these kinds of GLP-1 receptor agonist drugs. Um, will they be covered by insurance? How accessible will they be? We've had challenges with um, Ozempic and semaglutide medications, um, finding them, making sure they're available for people. So that could be a factor. And then the rebound effects. Step four trials of the semaglutide. I've made a video. I'll put a link at the end of this video for this. Um, the semaglutide showed a rebound weight gain after stopping the medication. So that could be a complication. It might be a long-term drug that people keep taking because once you stop, so far it seems like the people will regain weight or the studies have shown that they'll regain their weight unless you have habits or other changes that come along with the medication that you're undertaking. So the thing with this Eli Lilly drug and the denuclepron that I talked about last month is that this could take a couple of years. It's not ready yet. Lilly, Eli Lilly just initiated a phase three or forgoplon study uh, for the treatment of obesity, the attained trials, and the type two diabetes for achieved trials. And I, I look forward to covering those as more information comes out, but it's just a heads up now and something to look back in a couple of years. And I'll say, look, I covered that right when it came out and I'd like to stay up to date keep you updated as well. Now, what you do need is confidence, realistic focus, and accountability to practice new habits with or without these weight loss drugs. So if you're concerned about how you're eating or, whoops, lost that, <laughs> or you wanna make some changes for your health, then um, you can check me out. I got some links in the description. Um, I have the free seven day health habits challenge that could help you out a lot in establishing new habits in your day to day. So you don't need these drugs, you don't have to buy them, you don't have to wait for them to finish being developed and so on. All right. And then if you want to get up to date by watching the rest of these GLP-1 RA weight loss playlists, we'll talk about Terzepatide, Manjaros, Glutide, Wegovi, Ozempic. Um, check that out. I'll put the playlist next to my head next. And these don't want to stay in today. And then subscribe to my channel, click like, and let me know what you think. Are you fascinated by these? Are you interested? Do you find it a really boring topic? Leave a comment below. Let's talk about it. And as always, keep practicing. Peace.